That is quite a piece of history that's sitting right here on Oh, that it is. And we've seen a little bit of this boat earlier on during the H1 Unlimited qualifying, taking a spin midway through it. We know this boat can move. Yeah, watch David up here. See what he does. He's got the other three boats coming down the front straightaway. David's starting to leg it out a little bit. I thought he might. He's going to run up and just catch him. But this is going to be something special. Michael McDonald, take him away. You got three right in your lap. And it's a parade lap as they come over the front stretch. Pay it back on the inside. Squire Shop lane two. The blue blaster in lane number three. And look at David Williams at the top end of the course in that Budweiser at the exit pin of turn number four onto the front stretch. He is trying to reel them all in, and they're kind of waiting for him. That's exactly what they're doing, Michael. They're waiting for him. He's also showing us a one Now as he pulls up alongside, you were talking about a photo up. Now the other three boats see him to their right and on the outside lane number one is the pan pack lane number two the squire shop lane number three the atlas van lines lane number four and on the outside the griffin budweiser final heat time of the 1981 columbia cup those four boats were all in it look at david williams derek he's right out against the outside course markers in that griffin bud oh that is talk about living life right on the edge he's got to be within maybe three feet of that buoy trying to take it now on the outside as we got some racers here jockeying for position looks like some movement in the middle there lanes wow. absolutely incredible on the griggs backstretch takes your breath away what, doesn't it what an amazing sight Welcome to the time warp almost 40 years ago. Hand back, Squire, Atlas, Budweiser. 41 years, actually. You could throw a blanket over them. They are deck to deck to deck to deck as they come up into Shell Sun Market, turn number three at the top end of the course. White be flag. A, be a beautiful sight to see them as they come around the apex into White's finished furniture, turn number four. Our Buffalo brother friends up at turn number four, too. Get your cameras ready. And there it is. There's your photo. That and the upside down Red Bull helicopter. Get the cameras out as they come to the John Mosteller Memorial start finish line. Pay it back, Squire, Atlas, Bud. Just something special here as these four come down. We're looking at a white flag down here in the lower yep. corner. And he got it. Can't miss the Squire shop in that lane, too, with that cathedral arched wing that they've got. The silhouette is just so much different. <laughs> Here's David Williams. He's painting the boys, but he's painting the outside course markers. He's giving those guys just a ton of room. And you say, boy, what a sight for the eyes. It's not bad for the ears, either. Yeah, right now as they turn Tire Factory turn number two, it looks like vying along with Atlas for that top spot, cutting it on the inside. Squire at number two, and then in that inside lane, uh, our first model pan pack slowing down a little bit. I mean, these dash races are really short, guys, and so this back stretch here, I mean, this is it. If somebody's going to make a move, they need to surge ahead now. Oh, the move on the inside. Look at the pan pack gaining on the Atlas. Pan pack is going to force the tempo up the Griggs. Ace Hardware backstretch as they get ready to dive into Shell Sun Market turn number three. I just don't think you can drive the competitive nature of the driver from them completely. No doubt. Oh, yeah, no is doubt. that what you got? Well, watch this. David Williams on the outside is getting a little boat speed. Boy, for our Buffalo Brothers fans over there in turn number four. That's a picture. Cameras are out. That's a picture. Coming right at you. Right at you. Ah, so nice. All right, bring them down the front stretch to the Moss Teller Memorial start finish line. Who's going to take the checkered flag? Pay it back, Squire, Atlas, Bud. Looks like Atlas with a little surge. And the Atlas. The Atlas. Budweiser, pay it back, and Squire shop. You can tell, you 
could tell Kip gave the Atlas a little squirt when yep. he came off the corner, and all of a sudden the rooster tail jumped up a little bit on that boat in lane three. And what fun! Yeah, what fun! And we heard David Williams talking earlier that he was going to go out and play with their toys on the river, and they just did. And we're going to see that a number of more times. But. <clears throat> what's going on y'all what's going on what is going on it's your boy Seattle Rick 206 aka that boy Rick aka they call him slick aka h1 hype man Rick 206 aka 2d hydroplane game Rick <clears throat> aka Rooster Tail Rick, also known as Rick McQueen Jr., lead promotions for Hydro 2D, the racing game. I appreciate you guys. Please share the video. Share the video. Those that will be watching this on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Team Hydro 2D and your boy Rick about to take you for a ride. <coughs> We about to just get on into it. Y'all seeing what was going on on the screen. We had the vintage hydros going. We got the Miami feel to it. Let's get it. Straight to the racing, y'all. Straight to the racing. I appreciate y'all.
U-17 Tempest first, the U-6 Miss Madison second, the U-8 Dr. Toyota third, your boy coming in fourth in that Atlas Van Lines thing, the U-80 Miss Vans PX coming in fifth and rounding up the field, the U-5 Candyman. Let's run it back. I hit that buoy. I hit that buoy. That's why we slowed down in that Atlas. U17 Tempest first. U5 Candyman second. U80 Miss Vance PX third. U8 Dr. Toyota fourth. U6 Miss Madison fifth. And your boy coming in sixth in that Atlas. Yeah, we hit that. We hit that buoy. We had to. We had to slow down. Let them go on around us.
<clears throat> the U31, Miss Circus Circus coming in first. Kentucky on the paving coming in second. Your boy coming in third in the Squire Shop. Coming in fourth, the U8, Dr. Toyota coming in fifth. The U6, Miss Madison coming in sixth. Rounding out the field, U5, Candyman. Let's run that back. Let's run that one back.
was just kind of hanging around waiting. And again, swimmers, waiters, we need you out of the river or up on the shore, please. As the boats come up the back stretch, pay and pack on the inside, Budweiser Griffin on the outside. That Pasco shoreline definitely has filled in. Looking good, Pasco. Get the cameras out. So the Squire shop is back out. And we start to see it. Oh, and the Atlas jumped through the Esco Electric infield back to the front stretch. And I think the blue blaster may be heading back to the pits. I think you're right. I think he's going to come around here and jump over with the Squire. Yep. He makes the no, left-handed turn. He is out. I don't know where he's going. I don't know where he's going, but he's going to have a conversation with the official when he gets back in because he just went outside two course markers. And I think he just picked up and went inside that one. But he, he came off the race course. Yeah, sailing along here at Tire Factory turn two. Looks like Squire might be waiting up for him, though. Coming down the front stretch. Budweiser on the outside, paying back on the inside. Squire shop on the back stretch, trailing the blue blaster that did a funny kind of an S turn down around the bottom end of the course and went outside the course marker. I believe that'll get him a conversation with an official. Just a quick, you know, just a quick one. It's like, what was that? What, what'd you do? So the boats are equidistant on both ends of the course. Yes, yeah, so you're going to have two heats of competition here, I guess. You've got the pan pack on the inside of the Griffin, and then you got the other two boats, the Squire, and the Atlas Van Lines at the top end. Interesting, of course, Chip Hanauer driving Bill Muncy's Atlas Van Lines. But he's also looking off to the side of Shane Hill, who drove the Squire track. Yeah, Chip really puts his foot into it as they come across start finish. Starts to pull away a little bit from the Squire shop, and now the Squire shop on the inside, feathering the throttle, coming down the front stretch, and it's deck to deck racing as they head into All Doors Incorporated turn number one. What a great sight. Oh, that it is here now as they hit that apex coming into Tire Factory, turn number two. That arch wing, that horizontal stabilizer on Squire Shop really stands out. Such a cool looking vessel as it looks like Blue Atlas coming real wide out of that turn, sticking to the outside. But now as they hit this back stretch, showing a little bit of speed, got the rooster tail going and uh, jumping ahead here by a couple boat lengths as they head down the Griggs back stretch. Back to the front stretch. Budweiser on the outside, pay and pack on the inside. Great photo opportunity, both sides of the river right now. That's a great shot on the backstretch with the Atlas on the outside and the Squire inside. Love the equidistant action of the two boats on the yep. one and the other two. Probably, before this is all said and done, they'll all hook up and do the four-way like they did yesterday. Well, we even, hope so, yeah. Let's hope so for, uh, you know, photo opportunity's sake. Uh, to have these four boats together at the same time is really extraordinary. It really is. Back over to Tire Factory turn number two. Have a chance to see the bud paying back over there. And they're onto the Griggs back stretch to the Mosteller Memorial start finish line with a white flag out. Chip Hanauer in the blue blaster. Atlas van lines on the outside. Squire shop inside, and they are deck to deck as they head down to All Doors Incorporated, turn number one. Yeah, looking good here. Squire shop with that distinctive cathedral arched horizontal stabilizer. Back up at the top end of the race course, you've got that wing to pan that quick score. It ain't good enough to be good at one thing. 
when the boats were built back in the day, when they would come out, the boats would not be good right out of the box. That was extremely rare. And there was a lot of innovative stuff done with that pan pack. Well, they took it down to the Miami Marine Stadium for the first race of the year in 1973. The course record was 112. Mickey Riemann put the pan pack in the water, ran a lap just a tick under 120. And everybody went, wow. That's incredible, and that Miami stadium was built just for hydroplane racing, just for boat racing. It, it's amazing. There's been talks about a possible comeback. I wonder if that'll ever happen, Brad. Well, it might happen, and you're exactly right. It was built for boat racing. The only problem was the boats got too big and too fast for that race course as far oh. as these boats. Um, we've had a couple of boats not be able to hold the corner on that race course and end up on the beach. <laughs> And that, that's not a good thing. Uh, like Steve David, who did it down in Arizona one time, said that the walking home from a boat race is not necessarily a good thing. Squire Shop, Atlas Van Lines cross the Mosteller Memorial start finish line. On the back stretch, final pass. Budweiser pay it back, and they are deck to deck. Certainly seems that way. Maybe less than half a boat length in between the two. Well, I tell you, Chip was dancing the Sponsons on the Atlas. That was pretty good. Just to finish real quick on that story about the pay it back and the, the very fast qualifying speed. Oh, they followed it up. There were three preliminary heats. They took first in all three. There was a final heat. They took first in that one, too. And so everybody knew right then that was going to be the wave of the future. That was the boat you were going to have to be. So back to the top end of the course and off the exit bin of White's finished furniture and hardwoods, turn number four, Budweiser and the pay it back. And a photo finish across the Mosteller start finish line. Too close to call. Just amazing. It's a heater. And two more coming out of turn number four. And hello to our Buffalo Brothers friends up at turn number four. Love how they're doing this. The two and the two. Yesterday was the four wide. Probably back to another four to op. Four wide tomorrow. And Chip. Hanauer is going to lead across the start finish line by a boat length. Over the Squires shop and a final pass down the front stretch and they'll head back into the Neil F. Lampson pits. And the only right hand turn, turn up five. Summit funding as they head back to the pit area. Perfect exhibition for oh. the hey, unlimited bills. Yes, Brad. From down here, we got John Watkins, who uh, we did not know who was behind the wheel of the Squire sure. Shop. It's Don, John Watkins, who is very much involved with the Hydroplane and Race Boat Museum, the restoration of this particular Squire. And this was a little bit of driver training for him. He has driven the Squire before since they've christened it, but he's never driven it alongside another boat. That's why he was on the inside of the Atlas fan lines. And what better guy to lead him around the race course than Mr. Hanauer and the Blue Blaster. So I'm sure John is pretty excited. He got to go side by side for the first time.
about time we make the statement we always make when we get to a boat race and it's time for Heat 1A, this time sponsored by American Dumpster. Jeff, you cannot win the Southern Cup in the first heat of the weekend, but you can certainly lose it. Be careful, finish, and score points. This is the building block. This is the heat you want to score. You want to score well. You don't want to come out of this heat with the goose egg, which is the zero. This is your building block to get points in the first second, first section, second section, third section to be on the front row of the Southern Cup Championship tomorrow at 5.30 Central Daylight Time here in Guntersville. 325 until the start, 325. Dustin Eccles cutting across the race course from the back stretch to the front stretch on the GP course. That is a legal maneuver. Jeff, let's talk a little bit about our start procedure here. We've, it's been basically the same as it's been for our previous two classes. It's a clock start, but you vote on the start finish line when the clock strikes zero. Do not jump that start. You will be penalized and you will not win. But there's an added factor to this whole thing. You cannot drop your boat below 80 miles per hour. So when we get a winner in this heat, the boats have to go through tech inspection, and that's where they pick up that 80 mile an hour violation should it happen. So you can't just go up to the top end of the race course and park your boat at 10 miles an hour. You must stay above 80 miles per hour. The drivers have indication in the cockpit. They also have the radio guys in their ears explaining this to them. Two minutes and 28 seconds to the start. This is what we call the milling period. Got a couple boats at the top end of the race course, one on the back stretch, and Dylan Runney at the bottom end. Runny at the bottom end, as Brad mentioned, the turbinator with Jimmy King just past the halfway mark on the back chute. Two boats up in turn number two, the Tennessee Orange bucket list racing of Dustin Eccles and the dominant red Beacon Electric with J. Michael Kelly. We are coming up on two minutes. Two minutes fast. until American Dumpster H1 Unlimited Heat 1A. Brad Luce, the season is about to begin for H1. I like the lineup. Let's get this party started. Let's get it started. Remember, Dylan Runney, the third boat coming down the front straightaway here. He has to start behind the field and on the outside. You see him moving to the outside. Jeff, these guys are awfully early to get down to the bottom end of the race course here at a buck 30, which we are at now. So it's a minute 30. This is where the 80 miles per hour comes in the play. If you're down there too early and have to slow down, you run the risk of breaking that 80 mile per hour barrier, and that can cost you dearly. But they'll come up the back stretch. It is Dustin Eccles leading the field up there. Got three boats behind him. Jeff, bring him up to the top end of the course. Coming up on the one minute period for American Dumpster Unlimited 1A. Three, two, one, mark. One minute period in session. H1 Unlimited Heat 1A. Our heat sponsor, American Dumpster. 
Leading the field up, looks like you'll get lane number one, Dustin Eccles in bucket list racing. J. Michael Kelly coming into the two lane in the Beacon Electric. Jimmy King in the Turbinator, Griggs Ace Hardware in three. Dylan Runny to the outside in four in Miss Home Street. We are approaching 30 seconds. Brad Luce, let's start this Southern Cup. Bring him to the green flag. Thank you very much, Jeff. It looks like J. Michael Kelly's going to claim lane number one. I think Dustin Eccles is going to go in two. I think the Terminator's going to go in three. And then on the far outside and behind, as he is supposed to, is going to be Dylan Runney. But as we saw, the boats were down there too early. And Dustin Eccles is crawling up to the start-finish line here in the 40. We're inside 10 seconds until our start. We're on five seconds. We are four, three. Two, one, mark, and we are racing in Heat 1A, presented by American Dumpster. I think we've got the 40 bucket list racing definitely across the start finish line early, but until we get it legal, we will call them as they are on the water. Eccles is going to get out of the corner for check then. It is J. Michael Kelly on the inside. He's got a lot of boats with him. He's got the Terminator. You can hear him on the outside. There is Eccles. He pulls up alongside J. Michael Kelly, and now who out by about a boat length, maybe a boat length and a half. He may have jumped Jeff, but man, he's moving. Start is under review. Eccles in front. He could be the culprit. Eccles in front. Kelly is there. The Terminator in third into turn number two. Exciting dueling to begin the day, but is Eccles legal? We'll call him as they are on the water until we hear it officially. Kelly with the inside late position. Look at him right on the buoy roll. Now it's Eccles on the outside. Whether he jumped or not, two of the fastest race boats in the world are tied together as they come across our finish line. Jeff, I think you've got an update. We got a one lap penalty on your physical leader, Dustin Eccles in the bucket list racing, the Tennessee Orange down the lap for a gun jump. So your leader is the dominant red boat in turn number one, J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Electric. That moves the Turbinator, the turbocharged Allison up to second, Griggs Ace Hardware, Miss Home Street in third, Eccles physically in front, but in fourth. Yeah, he's in fourth place, so your leader is J. Michael Kelly, the red boat up the back stretch. That is the Beacon Electric. And if we have that information, so does J. Michael Kelly. That's why you see him letting the orange boat go. Let him go. That's not who he's racing against. However, in his right side rear view mirror, as Jeff calls him the Terminator, the U3, the Greeks ace hardware, he is trying to make a move. Coming up on the outside of J. Michael Kelly. Dustin Eccles will come down. He will be our leader on the water, but he's actually running it forward. But Jimmy King is making a move, Jeff. Brad with Eccles getting that one lap penalty. He has come toward the inside, and Kelly's had to go outside. He's wake, your official leader. Here comes the turbocharged Allison, charging on the outside. This one is not over. American Dumpster, unlimited 1A. It's the two top dominant red boats. Kelly, your leader, Brad the Terminator is right there. Yeah, he's right there. The race is for second place, except that is a race for first place. The two red boats, Kelly on the inside, King on the outside. You can't see King driving a three, the Greeks ace hardware, but he's right with him. This one is gonna be close. It's gonna be a charge to the finish line. Kelly with the late position, but it is Jimmy King on the outside with an awful lot of boat speed. He's gonna pack as much as he can into this corner. Now you see Dustin Eccles go way wide and give our leader room to come down and race this out. There is Kelly. There is King. I think J. Michael Kelly will be able to hold him off. Dustin Eckle comes across, but on his inside, our winner of Heat 1A on the water, J. Michael Kelly driving the Beacon Electric. Second place to Jimmy King in the Griggs presents Miss Ace Hardware. Holy smoke. Our third place boat will be the rookie, Dylan Runney, driving the Miss Home Street. And I can only think Jeff Ayler Dustin Eccles is just kicking himself in that cockpit. We said, don't make a mistake. Get your points in that first heat. He we, made a mistake. We